actually giving us the sense of satisfaction that the future of the church is in good hands. I was most impressed with the Sabbath school division as they shared. My only little challenge, I want to throw out for God's willing if we live to see the end of this coming quarter, that we add the seniors to the memory verse. <laughs> Amen? 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 Take up the challenge. Take up the challenge. And even if you can't do all 13, do what we can. And show the young people that we are old, but we are not cold. We are very happy to share God's word. And I especially want to thank Daniel for the children's story. Because he has made my sermon a little shorter. Today we are going to talk briefly about the army being armed for the crisis. Being armed for the crisis. Shall we bow our heads? Gracious Father in heaven, as we open up your book, may your Holy Spirit be with us. Hide me behind the cross. May me not be seen, but may Christ Jesus be seen through me. Love the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Lord, may it be acceptable in your sight, for I know if it is acceptable in your sight, it will be acceptable in your people's sight, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Ever since sin entered the world, a battle has been raging. Satan that old dragon, he is relentless. He is ensuring that as many of us as is possible be on his side. And he's not playing any ease up. He is going to the full extent to see that we are lost. And I tell you something more. The closer we get to the end of the battle, the closer we get to the end of this war, is the fiercer the battle is going to become. And if you don't believe me, turn to Revelation chapter 12. Because on the Isle of Patmos, John wrote... And he left these words for us. Revelation, the last book of the Bible. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 12. The Bible reads, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and he that dwell in them. Why? Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Why? For the devil is what? Come down upon what? Upon you. Having what? Great wrath. Why? Because he, the devil, knows that he hath but a short time. I verily believe that he recognizes that last year, this time, in comparison to this year, is one year shorter. Last week, this time, in comparison to today, it is one week shorter. And the shorter we get in the closing part of this earth's history, is the more is going to turn up the heat. But I say to my church today, let the devil do what he has to do. But God's people, we must do what we have to do. We must get closer and closer and closer and closer to Jesus Christ. Or is if there is one thing the devil knows. If there is one thing the devil knows. Is that he cannot touch us when we are safe in the arms of Jesus. And so brothers and sisters. There is no exception to any of us here. Whether the pastor, 
the elders or the members, no exception. We are all facing a crisis. Your crisis may be different from mine. My trials may be different from yours. But as long as we are bound for God's kingdom, crisis we must face. But I say to you, as we face our crisis, as we face our Goliaths, as we face our challenges, I say to us all, let us remember that if we focus on the challenge, if we focus on the giants, we will stumble. But if we focus on God, the giant will stumble. Focus on the giants, we are going to stumble. But focus on God, the giants will stumble. Turn with me to my opening text. And by the way, my first elder, without the knowledge of the pastor, gave me a time, but I'm not going to use up all the time that he has given me. I won't tell you the time that he has given me. But it's a secret between both of us. And at the end, I'll tell you if I use up all that he gave me. Turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 40, 4 0. Let's go, everybody. Everybody. And David said unto Saul, sorry, verse 40. Let me read from my thing instead of from the screen. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him what? I'm not hearing everybody. And chose him five stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a script. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. Let's pause there a minute. And I notice, Pastor, you were sent to Antigua. How many package? Five. How many stones? Good. Let me just pause here a little. Just a little. Just Look at your hand again for me. I know you looked at it this morning, but just look at it again. Everybody. Is there anybody by chance have lost a finger? You have? You have six. I'm in trouble today. You have six fingers. Had. Okay, I am cool then. Anybody have six fingers? Good. Well, we are all going to preach then. Five fingers. Now, each, where are my children? Hold up your hands. Children? Well, not the big children, the little children now. Little children, hold up your hands. Hold up those fingers for me now. Good. What is this finger called, children? The Everybody, this one, this one, the middle finger, and this one, the ring finger, and this. Let's go one more to everybody. Good. Now, that's what we're going to preach about today. Those five fingers. Now, the first stone 
that David took and put into his bag. How many stones he put into the bag? The first stone represents the thumb or the big finger. And it is called the finger of the past. The what? Represents the past. Are we together on that? So remember now, the first finger, which is a thumb, represents the first of the five stones, and that represents the past. Jump to verse 11 of 1 Samuel 17. Verse 11. Chapter 17, verse 11. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and what? Talk to me now. They were dismayed and greatly what? Afraid. So remember now, as Daniel told us, we had the Philistine, we had Goliath. And he came out every day. And he would taunt Israel. He would challenge Israel. And the Bible says that when King Saul and entire Israel heard what Goliath was saying, they were afraid, they were dismayed, and they were greatly terrified. But jump down. To 34 now. Our scripture reading. Among them. Was David. Listen to what David said. David said unto Saul. Thy servant. Kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion. And a what? And took a lion out of the where and I who I David went out after him and did what smote him and did what deliver it out of his mouth and when he rose against me I David caught him by his beard and did what smote him and did what slew him Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Seeing that he had made what? Defile the armies of the living God. And David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivereth me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear he shall deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine and Saul said unto him David go and the Lord be with thee I say praise God I say hallelujah brothers and sisters I look on this and I say this was David's resume this was his credential. Everybody, over a period of time, as you go to school, as you get employed, you build up your resume so that when you walk into the interview, when you apply for the job, your prospective employer will look on your resume and see if you are fit. What do you do each day you study, each day you work to accumulate an impressive resume? Ladies and gentlemen, every day, every single day, we must be preparing our resume for the crisis. David was able to prepare his resume for he faced the lion, he faced the bear. My challenge to my church to die. What is your resume? 
What is your lion? What is your bear? If you don't conquer your lion and conquer your bear, you will never be able to face your Goliath. It is by facing your lion and your bear every day, every minute, every hour that you will ultimately be able to conquer your, your Goliath. My lion and my bear will only motivate you but you can't use it to conquer. You have to face your lion Face your beer so that you can use what has happened in the past. The same God of yesterday is the same God today and forevermore. So this is what we must use. What he has done for us in the past. He will do it for us today. Come here my elder. Help me preach. You see, God sometimes allow us various lions and bears to prepare us for the Goliath. Hold this for me. So this is one lion. This is a bear. This is another lion. This is another bear. This is another lion. Give me a bear. Listen to me. Sometimes God wants to prepare us, Sister Francis. But we murmur, we complain. And so sometimes God doesn't allow the various lions and the bear. Because we complain. So we only reach here when God wants us to reach up there. But I say to my church today, whatever lion, whatever bear, whatever lion, whatever bear, say thank you Jesus for God will make a way of escape. It doesn't matter where we are. He will never give us more than we are able to bear. We must conquer through Jesus Christ. So I say to my church, I say to my church today, write today's trouble in the sand and chisel today's victory in the stone. Write today's trouble in the sand and use a chisel the victory in the stone so the wind will come the waves will come but the rock will stand firm that you can look back and say this is the God of yesterday this is a God who have brought me through sickness this is a God who have brought me through pain this is a God who have brought me through the time when I lost my job. Thanks be to God. So the first stone is a stone of the what? Come on church. The stone of the past. Are you with me? If you don't have, listen to me pastor. I am a firm believer in the Bible. Cover to cover. But I tell you something more. When I read about Job, when I read about Abraham, those are true story I believe. But I tell you something more. When pastor can come to me, or Sister Denise can come to me and tell me what they have gone through and how God have led them and I can look in pastor's face and see the flesh and blood and I can understand what he said I am even stronger. Nothing is wrong with Job's story 
But when I can see the man, I can touch the man, I can feel the man, I can hear it from the man's mouth, I am stronger. Let the past. Sometimes it is not only about us, but it is about the glorification of the name of Jesus. God has somebody out there that he allows our line and our bear not only to benefit us, but to help some soul out there. We move on now to stone number two. It is an index finger. If it was a Jamaican audience, primarily, I would tell you something else about this finger. You know? It is called oh, 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 it's a Jamaican dead. It is called lick, pot, sweep. Some people over there know it. When my mother bake Are you with me? Yeah. And so we always volunteer to wash. Wash that pad. Because there is something always remaining. And it is this finger that you use to wipe out there. Are we together? You see, I know my audience, you know, Pastor. Once I start talking about food, everybody come alive. Okay, but I want to take you to verse 3 now. Leaving the lick pot sweep now. Verse 3 of chapter 17. And the Philistine stood on the mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. Follow me now. So, this was a mountain. And you come down the mountainside. Into the valley. Go up again. So, oh, this is a good example. So, this was one side of the mountain. This was on the other side of the mountain. And there was a valley. Are you with me? Watch the finger now. So, this was one side. This was the other side. So, in between the thumb and the index finger, there is a valley. Are you with me? Before David could have gone on the other side, David had to come down. Are you with me? And in coming down the valley, it is symbolically represents down on his knees. Are you with me? What am I getting at? Before we can face our giants, before we can face our Goliath, we must get down on our knees. For it is on the knee that we are going to gain power. It is on the knee we are going to get strength. The more we pray, I heard you with it this morning. The more we pray, is the greater power we have. More prior, more power. Little prior, little power. David gained his power not only based on his resume, but he also gained his power also on his knees. Sometimes we want to gain victory. Sometimes we want to become victorious without staying on our knees. Listen to me. I want to tell my church today. I want to tell my church today that we need to cut out cut out this popcorn prior. You know the popcorn? You just kneel down. And, 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 and you don't even kneel down too good before you jump up again. If you kneel down, you just jump up. Ladies and gentlemen, we brothers and sisters, we need to spend time on our knees. 
because that's where victory my sister this is where victory is gained on our knees Ellen White Ellen White says that the weakest of the saint who is found on their knees his or her knee Satan tremble we run away we need to pray we need a power for us to gain the victory for us to be victorious for us to be armed for the crisis we must spend time on our knees We move on. You see, James 4 verse 7 says, Resist the devil and he will flee. Draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto his. We move to number three now. So what is this called? The stone of? This one? The stone of? I'm going to preach long. It's so quick me going. This tone off. This tone off. The next one. This one. Prayer. Five P's, you know. Five P's. Stone of the past. And then this is tone off. Prayer. Now the third one is called the stone of priority priority so it is a pass prior priority turn to verse 46 45 I'm not leaving Samuel yet first Samuel chapter 17 verse 45 stone of priority 45 right down to 47 let's go together everybody then David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a what? And a with a what? And with a what? But I, but I, but I come to thee in the name of who? In the name of who? The Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Verse 46. This day, this day will the who? The who? The Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will swat, smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air. And to the wild beast of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a what? There is a what? There is a God where? Verse 47 and last. And all the assemblers shall know who? Shall know who? The Lord save it not with a sword. And the spare for the battle, for the battle, for the battle, for the battle is the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, let us not fool ourselves. David was given the priority to the Lord. It is not about me. It is not about what who can preach and who can pray. It is about glorification of the name of God. We must give priority to God. My young people, my young people, study. Are you with me? I said, get your bachelor's, get your master's, get your doctorate, but make sure that in all you're getting, you get God. You get Jesus. We must make God our priority. 
and anything or anybody that is going to come between us and our priority must take second place. It is about time. I say it is about time that we begin to differentiate between the creator and the created. And many people, especially our youths, are placing total priority on the created. But when we place our priority on the creator, then everything that the creator have created will fall in place. We have to trust the creator. And it is not about position or possession. It is about the creator. And that is why, that is why David took the stone of priority. For he was not going out there to show off. He was going to demonstrate the power of God. That is why he was able to win the battle. For it was not about David. But he was there to demonstrate the power of God. Amen. Read it again when you go home. Yes. The only way we can be fully armed for the crisis. Is when we understand that the battle is the Lord's. Amen. We are only going to gain the victory. When the battle is recognized as the Lord. We jump down to stone number four. And it is a stone of passion. And you're not surprised that it is that name, passion. Because it is called the what finger? The ring finger. Passion. Stone of passion. But it's not that passion I'm talking about now. It's a different type of passion. Let's jump to verse 48 and 49. 48 and 49. First Samuel 17. Let's go everybody. And it came to pass. When they what? And came and drew nigh to meet David. And David hastened. David what? David hastened. He ran. He hastened. And he ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand into his back. And took thence a stone. A stone. And sling it and smote the Philistine in his forehead. That the stone stuck into his forehead. And the giant. Listen to me. We need to understand something here, brethren. David didn't crawl, he had a passion. For he was going in the name of the Lord. He was going with his resume. He was going because he spent time with his God on his knee. Are you hearing me? So he knew in whose name he was going. So he ran. He had a passion. He had an urgency. He had a work to do. Where does our passion lies? In what is our passion enveloped? Listen. Ellen White says that Goliath was so proud, was so fierce, was so full of himself that when he saw David coming without any armor, without anything, his pride caused him to put 
pull back. Are you with me? Listen to me. God knows where the attack must be. And the very spot that was left uncovered, the very spot that was left open, that's the very spot that God was willing to use. This is not in the Bible now. And this is not in the spirit of, this is mingology now. I believe, Pastor, that when, don't quote it now from the Bible, it's not so, that when the stone, come on children, one little stone went round and round and round and one little stone went through the hair. Listen to me. I believe that the minute that stone left the sling, I believe a mighty angel came down from heaven at that time, took the stone with the speed, are you hearing me? With the power and landed it, not up here, not down here, but right to the exposed part. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever your Goliath, whatever your challenge, whatever your crisis, whatever your difficult, God can take down that Goliath. Use the past. Use prior. Use Use priority and use passion. Are you with me down there? Romans. Romans. Hold your finger at Samuel. And turn just a little to Romans. I'll come back to Samuel as I close number five stone. But I must read to you Romans chapter eight. Romans eight. Thirty-five. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Who? 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 Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. For I, for I, for I, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor that, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord, and I say amen. In all these things, in all these things, I say in all these things, we, and that we includes you, and you, and you, and you, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. How are we going to be armed for the crisis which are ahead of us? We have to be armed like David. With what? The past. I'm not hearing everybody. Let's begin again. One more time. These two sides. This side here. Now we're going to close. Are we doing Hilda? Okay. Last one now. The last stone. The little finger. Persistence. Per 
persistence. 17, back to, come back to now. 1 Samuel 17, verse 51. Therefore, the same passion, David ran, stood upon the Philistine, and took his sword, the Philistine sword, because David never had. Are you with me? David never had a sword. So he took the Philistine sword, Goliath's sword, drew it out of the ship, and slew him, cut off his head therewith. Again, again, this is Mingology now. I believe that Goliath, and I think that Daniel told us he was about nine feet. That means his chest must have been broad. I don't believe that David could use one hand. I don't believe that David could stand beside him. I believe somehow David must go on top of him. Stand up somewhere in his chest. Are you with me? I don't know how he did it. But I believe the Bible. Although Goliath dropped dead. David want to make sure. No coming back. No coming back. Nail. Dead as knit. You're preaching with me now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we conclude. We conclude now. There are many theology and theory about five stones. It is said that Goliath had other relatives, four other relatives. And he wanted to make sure that even when he get Goliath down, if others would come, he had enough stones. I am not going to speculate as to why. But I want us to understand from a different perspective now. That we have to be persistent in prayer. Sometimes one prayer doesn't work. We have to keep on praying. Keep on trusting. Keep on believing. Students, sometimes the grades may not be what you want, but you can't give up. You have to keep on studying. You have to keep on working. Are you with me down there, church? Parents, sometimes the children may not be as how you want them to be. But you have to keep on praying. You have to keep on loving. You have to keep on coaching them. You can't give up. Keep on crying. Young people, sometimes you can't understand why your parents is telling you this. And why your parents is telling that. But they're all the heads many times. Know the path. Keep on trusting. Keep on obeying. Keep on following. Keep on reading the Bible. Are you hearing me down there church? Listen to me. Pastor. 
is chairing the nomination committee, nominating committee. It's one thing to be on the board, but it's another thing to understand some of the things. As a church, sometimes when the board makes a decision, you may not understand everything, but trust your leadership of your church. Because if you know some things, you run out of the church. And you see the pastor? Pray for him. Pray for the pastor's wife. Pray for the pastor's family. Because sometimes, if you ever know what the pastor has to wrestle with, and have to keep wrestling and praying over to keep the church together. We have to be persistent in prayer. Are you hearing me down there, church? And I want to tell you that what you see now happening in the world, what you see happening in, in the disaster, what you see happening with the earthquake, what you see happening all around, it is just the brink of things. Worse is going to come and this is going to lead into the passing of the son of the law and the church will be tried. Are you hearing me? We have to be persistent. And this is why I'm begging the church. Get out of this popcorn prior thing. We have to spend time on our knees. Listen to me. I know that there are many cases when the heart is willing, but the flesh is weak. And you set the phone to alarm. And you set the clock to alarm that you can get up and spend time with God. And I know what it is to turn over and just stop that alarm and say, I take in five minutes more. But the secret to that, don't put the phone where you can reach it. Put it away. You can hear it, but far enough where you have to get up. And in the process of getting up, Walk out the sleep, shake out the sleep, and spend time with God. We have to be persistent. I'm closing. I'm closing. The devil doesn't give up easily. Are you with me? The devil always attacks us at where he sees our weakest point. And he tries this way and he doesn't get in. He tries another way. He doesn't get in. He's not going to give up. Listen to me. The Bible tells me. This is Bible now. Bible tells me that in the garden, in the wilderness rather, he tempted Jesus three times. Persistent. Try one time, never get you. Try the other time, never get you. Listen to me. You think we are anywhere near Jesus? And if Satan was so fierce, so bare fierce to, to tempt Jesus, what about little old Ming and you? By God's grace, we are going to be persistent. By God's grace, we're going to keep on the foot of the cross. By God's grace, we're going to continue to hold firm. We're going to close now. Hebrews is my closing text. Finish now. Hebrews chapter 12. So all those who are sleeping now, wake up. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 is my closing text. Wherefore, wherefore, see, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Let us, including the preacher, let us, including the pastor, let us, including the elder, let us, including the praise team, let us, including the band, let us. 
lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking, 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 looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endure the cross despising the shame and today i said today i said today is set down at the right hand of the throne of god amen church hallelujah church praise the lord church let us lay aside let us be armed for the crisis how are we going to be armed for the crisis through what through the past so whatever your lion and your bear go through it gladly whatever your lion and your bear go through it with patience whatever your lion and your bear hit use it for it will be your resume it will be your resume then the next stone prior prior more prior more power little prior little power the next stone priority it is not about me it is not about you it is not about your husband it is not about your wife it is not about your fiance it is about god priority then the next stone passion we have to have a passion passion that by god's grace i'm going to be in god's kingdom passion that by god's grace i'm going to see some soul one for the kingdom of we must have a passion for something and the only thing that will last for time and for eternity is heaven then the last one persistent persistent we can't give up it is a battle it is a fight satan is not giving up satan is relentless he is determined but by god's grace we shall overcome by god's grace we will overcome by god's grace we must overcome and i'm happy i'm happy i'm happy that when we overcome our lion and our bear when we continue to pray when we continue to make God the priority when we continue with passion and when we are persistent one day one day we shall gather by the river one day we shall stand by the river with his crystal tide forever flowing from the throne of grace we're gonna make a pledge today everybody visitors and members we're gonna make a pledge that by god's grace praise team number 432 by god's grace we shall gather we will gather we must gather by ourselves we will not be able to make it but with our lion and our bear conquered with constant power with giving the lord priority with passion and persistence we shall gather we shall gather by the river number 432 shall we gather at the river where bright angels feet have trod number 432 all those who plan by god's grace to gather by the river i would like you to stand as the band and the prayer team everybody singing now